shower at last for the FFI in Paris. These dramatic pictures, filmed under dangerous circumstances, take us into those tense hours when, as the Allied columns race towards the capital, France's army of the resistance received the long-awaited signal to rise, to act no longer as an underground movement, but as an openly accredited part of the Allied forces. The men and women, even the children of Paris, set to work to free their city of the shadow of the swastika, under which it has lain for four humiliating years. Everyone able to bear arms, and many with only their bare hands, helps to build and man the barricades. The days of the oppressor are numbered. Everything that can be used as a barrier is pressed into service, but there is little time. The Nazi no longer swaggers about the streets, but he still has powerful weapons. He is learning, however, that FFI rifles handled with courage and devotion are more than a match for his vaunted military might. in the thick of the struggle is the flag of the Red Cross. While there are casualties to be tended, these magnificent first aid workers never falter. Their job is among the wounded and dying, and nothing the enemy can do will make them give up that job. In front of Notre Dame, and even in one of the towers of the famous cathedral, the Nazis have established strong points from which to fire upon the citizens among whom they strutted for so long. As more of the capital falls into French hands, prisoners are taken. Not only German, but men of questionable loyalties, who are soon bundled off out of harm's way. one of the slaughter yards of Colonel Stulpnagel, Nazi military governor of Paris, who is reported to have shot himself before Frenchmen could bring him to justice for his torture and mass executions of their fellow citizens. There are people in Paris today who carry ugly evidence of things that have gone on behind closed doors. There was hard fighting in the Paris streets before the Germans were forced into surrender. But true to their nature, the Nazis broke the armistice they had been granted and brought armor to bear against the citizens. The Patriots engaged in bitter fighting to keep the enemy from regaining control of the city until the liberating Allied armies could come to their help. Remember all the time that these rare pictures were being taken at extreme risk. In every section is captured the spine-tingling atmosphere which sweeps the boulevards of Paris. Death stalks abroad in these almost deserted avenues. Fires burn behind the Grand Palace in the Champs-Élysées. At last came the great news that the Allies had broken through into the outskirts and were hurrying forward to bring deliverance. The struggle had not been in vain. Once more Paris had risen through her fighting sons and daughters of the French forces of the interior. As the Battle of France speeds to its close, the resistance movements can feel that it is playing a worthy part in the liberation of its native land.